afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Bonnie Booley. Today in the loft is all about celebrating the beauty of traditional music. First up, we catch up with the Ibuyambu Orchestra. They make music using only traditional South African instruments. And they were very excited to have caught up with Madosini, the iconic Kosa musician. Stay tuned for more. In the kitchen is Jeannie. Hi, welcome to the show. Now today in the kitchen, interestingly enough, we're going to be doing genie style cooking, which loosely translated means we're not. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's the weekend. Who wants to be slaving in the kitchen? Uh, no, not no. me. Not, not even I. me. No. <laughs> so we're going to come up with two amazing, easy, like dining and entertaining um, dishes. Yeah. The first one. I don't, okay, I'm pointing at this because I know you love prawn cocktail chips. No, you actually, I have to tell you a story about this. You've got no idea how much I love that. That whenever Bonnie goes to Woolies, her little boy knows how much I love these chips so much. He goes, Mom, Mom, we've got to buy Jeannie the prawn chips. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this dish is actually going to be the second dish we're going to make, and it's going to be an amazing nut and herb crusted mascarpone dip. Yeah. And we're going to serve that, like I said, with the prawn chips. Amazing. And some cheese straws. Why not? Oh, cheese. Okay. <laughs> but first, what we're going to do is an amazing biltong and parsley cream cheese. Again, but this time we're serving it with mulberry toasts. All and right. some pretzels. Why amazing. not? Amazing. Of yeah. course. We need little cheese and pretzels in our life. And remember, we've made life so much easier for you. If you want to make any of these dishes, like, for example, if you want to make this one, all you need to do is SMS STRAW to double three six five zero. And if you want to make this dish, all you need to do is SMS TOAST to double three. 650. SMSs are charged at 150 each. Free SMSs don't apply, and T's and C's do. Bonnie's now on the couch with our very first guest. Mm -hmm. Now, as you know, September is Heritage Month, and we couldn't be joined by more fitting guests. The UCT's Ibuyambu Orchestra is no ordinary music group. Where most orchestras use the sounds of violins, cellos, and brass instruments, Ibuyambu explores the beauty of traditional African instruments. Headed by iconic musician Dizu Vlaikis, the ensemble consists of 25 members that bring together a wide and representative range of instruments to reflect musical and dance traditions from all regions of Africa. We're joined now by Dizu and some of the members of the orchestra. Welcome to the Love, gentlemen. Thank you. Lovely so to have you thank with you. us. Yes, thank you. El Kamaliti Ibuyambo, it means rebirth of African Renaissance. And uh, it's a name that I adopted from the president, Tabo Mbeki, when he started Uambo, you know, the African the Renaissance. African Renaissance, yes. 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 We'll always remember him for that. Exactly, yes. exactly. And many of us don't actually know the range of African traditional instruments that are available. Can you tell us about some of them? Yeah, you know, they come from all different places around Africa. We have um, Biras from Zimbabwe, Kutu horns that are made in Krahamsam by Professor Andrew Tracy. And then we had Amahadi, which we made ourselves. Mm. Marimbas that we made ourselves. Chambers that we made ourselves. And uh, most of the instruments, we make them ourselves. Because the problem is so difficult to spend a lot of money buying the instrument, whereas you can produce the very same kind of quality of music mm. with the very same instrument that you can make with your hands. Yes. Mm. And you've obviously traveled the world performing. And what has been the reaction from people overseas? You know, what I really like, especially if I will, I will talk about France, because in France, what we normally do, we do an educational program to different schools. Hmm. which uh, the government, they pay quite a lot of money to the disadvantaged schools. Now the French kids from at the age of four up to 11, they can sing Zulu, they can sing Kosa, wow. they can sing Pondo. And my problem, these kids are gonna come back to South Africa and start teaching yes. our kids. That's a lot more than we can say for our kids. Yes. <laughs> and how important is it for us to pass on this knowledge of traditional African instruments to younger generations? The easiest way to pass these things, kids, they've got to be present each and every time when this takes place. Because no one you are going to be called, say, come and practice. You just have to be present at all the times. When the music starts, if you see anyone playing, the kids must just get around with the people or the musicians. Yes. yes. So, Nathanga Naganjan, as Ibuyam, where did you meet? How did this whole process come about? Anybody uh, else like to answer? Can't, can't it. Okay. I've been with Bradizu more than 20 years. Um, he was playing for Mambondo then. So he saw the talent in me and then he called me. But hey, I think you have potential. 
come and join the group. And then we went to Singapore, 1996. I was 19 years old at that time. So he's uplifting the music that is slowly dying because traditional and African music is dying in Africa. Mm. So he's doing the best to, to, to teach more mm -hmm. kids, to be familiar with their tradition and cultures. Yes. So Bradizu is the man, man. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yes. And what is most of your music about? Um, we talk about the situation, the surroundings, politics that reflects the country, you know, as you know, I'm not going to mention, you know, <laughs> quite a lot of different things. But also at the end, you know, music is love. Yes. You know, that's where we can express ourselves, you know, when we are on stage. That's the time that we really express ourselves when we are on stage. Right. And how do you actually form the songs? Do you come up with the, the beat first, the tune first, or the words? How does it work? I mean, I don't know much about music. I don't know the jargon, so you'll tell me. Maybe, for instance, he will come with a melody, mm -hmm. and then he will come also with a percussion part. Okay. And then one will come with the voices, and yes. then we meld together. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so tell us about your latest album. What does it offer? What is on there? What can we expect to hear? Uh, the latest album, you know, it took the world by storm. First, it was number one in song lines in London. Wow. Then it was rated number um, five in the world charts of music. And then we also won a summer award. Now I just saw a clip on YouTube. I could not believe how the Nigerian, they dance into my music. Wow. Now I'm number five in Africa. That's amazing. Yes. So these are the things that, you know, it's so good that we are also part and parcel of, you know, this production so that people could hear what we are doing, you know, yeah. because without you guys we wouldn't be known. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Well, we can't wait to hear you perform a little bit later. <laughs> so please stay tuned for that. Thank you. Still to come on Afternoon Express, I start cooking in the kitchen and I'm making a built on cream cheese spread with Melba toast. Be right back. Tropica Island of Treasure is back. Are you ready to join South Africa's hottest celebrities in the Seychelles and become a TV star? Host Mini Lamini and Games Master Jonathan Boyton Lee want you to be part of one of seven smooth teams led by seven celebrities who will all compete for a million rand prize. Who will you choose? MT, Jessica Ngosi, Anga Makubalo, Carleen van Jasfeld, Maurice Page, Zakia Patel, or Sivan Gezi. All you have to do is purchase a Tropica and follow the instructions on pack. Visit tropica.co.za for more details and follow the conversation online using hashtag TIOT7. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. If you've just joined us, we're just about to get started in the kitchen. And I have to tell you how you've inspired me because I went from not knowing how to do anything, nothing, nada in the kitchen, to now I've been hosting these dinner parties using your recipes. Uh -huh. And I've decided I'm going to try and see how far I can go in life without cooking the same thing more than once. Let's do it. Yeah, Let's that's, do my, it. that's, that's my, my taste. Mm. I think we just start a whole new show just documenting that. I know, it's been quite a success so far. And now this is something that I can do now. Toast. Absolutely easy. Yeah. So let's get started. So I'm using some amazing biltong dust. Lovely. I do. Have you had this on popcorn before? No. It's crazy. Have no, you added stir? You're joking. You are no. speaking my language. No. Have you had I would stir throw that in yogurt. Stir through butter and then oh, spread no. on toast. I'm finished. That must be ridiculous. It is. It is. It's why We're not going to do it on that toast, huh? Hey? Yeah, why not? No, Maybe absolutely. We'll do it we're break. crazy. <laughs> so what we're going to start it with. We're, gonna... <laughs> we're doing some cream cheese. Yes. So we kind of like in stores at the moment. There's a lot, lot of variations of cream cheese that you can buy at different yeah. flavored ones. So we're going to take it like we're going back to basics. Buy the plain one and season your own cream cheese. Oh my cool. goodness! I'm all about cheese. I was in Europe and I just was just cheese every single 
day. And no one's complaining? No, I wasn't complaining. I came back a little bit heavier, but just so much happier. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Cream cheese goes in. I'm going to pop this to the side over I there. Mean, I'm happy to mix because so this, is, gonna, this is a good mix. Yeah, good idea. So I'm going to pass this to you and I'm going to give you the spatula and I'm going to start chopping up the parsley. Okay. So because we've got like quite smoky, earthy flavours with the boltong in there, a little bit of parsley goes a long way. So it's nice and fresh. Everybody's happy. And yeah. it's a vegetable, is it? Have I ever told you that I really love how you use a knife? Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm almost going to do it again, but now we're just showing off. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit of lemon zest as well. That goes in. I mean, it wouldn't have killed you to cut the parsley a little finer, but... It's the weekend. <laughs> Keep it nice and chunky. <laughs> so a tip again, and we get... Like, it's amazing how many people, like, love tips. And even the simplest of ones. Yeah, I like, always enjoy a good tip. Like, the good advice is zest your lemons before you squeeze them. Okay. Okay? Because it's quite a mission after you squeeze the juice out to now go and try and zest it. Okay. Cool. Got Yummy. it. So that's in there. So we obviously the last ingredient that we need for this is the bultong powder. So depending on how, like, bultongy, because that's a word, bultongy. Yeah. Depending on how bultongy you want Let's it. Let's make it quite bultongy. I agree. Like, quite. Okay, wait, let me mix. And then... Let me get this it's looking right. good. This is also okay. great. I'm, I'm doing this intentionally, More. actually, for the guys, you know? It's yeah. the weekend coming. Let your lady sit down, let her relax, and you'd stop putting some snacks together. No, exactly. This is something perfect for, like, rugby time, you know, when everybody watches all the important games. Yeah. This would be a great snack, even with, like, normal chips. Even if we win or lose, stuff. it doesn't matter. It's okay, yeah. but a good snack. Yeah. <laughs> that looks really good. It's yeah, but this is really hard to stew. <laughs> but I mean, at the same Maybe time, you're some... working your buyers and your tries. I uh, know, so totally. It's awesome. I know, I'm just tempted. I'm trying to not lick the bowl while I'm doing it, actually. <laughs> but that looks brilliant. So let me get in there. Okay, you... go for it. I know you're a perfectionist. I know you are. Okay, there. Cool, okay, cool. So what I'm going to do now me. is just take a whole lot out, put it in a bowl. Okay. And normally what happens, you see people like leveling things out. I'm yeah. not about that at all. No. I like it rustic. Yeah. So, like, I, I just do, like, it's kind of a chef -y thing. You do the smear along the inside of the bowl. Okay. Like that. And we're going to finish it off with a little extra... Biltong dust. Biltong dust. And so, like, I'm serving it with the mulberry toasts, but also the pretzels. Because, I mean, who doesn't love pretzels? Yeah, no, love pretzels. Cool. So that goes together. <laughs> what do you do? You just spread it on your toast and pop them on your pretzels. And I can see you coming in for more bulldog dust and go crazy. <laughs> what do you want for lunch, Jeannie? Dust. Dust. <laughs> Thank you so much. OK, so we've made life so much easier for you. If you want the shopping list or the ingredients, all you need to do is text TOAST to 33650. SMSs are charged at one, one rand fifty each. T's and C's apply and free SMSs do not apply. So here's a little recap. I have to absolutely agree with Jeannie. Since we've been cooking with Clem, we've all become better chefs and better dinner party hosts. Well, I'm still in the loft with the Ibu Yambu Orchestra, and recently we had an opportunity to catch up with one of the most iconic Kosa musicians that we have in South Africa, Uma Matusin. And you've done some work with her. Tell me what you think of her work. Uh, first of all, Matusin, she is my aunt. I'm the one who brought her here in Cape Town. I was the first to record, and I'm also the first to write a book about her. Wow. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, the music is very, it's good music for Bantu. Yes. You know, good music for Bantu and Auna age, young or old. It's very spiritual music. Very spiritual, well. yes. Yeah. And also, because of very few places where you can take or maybe where she could teach. Well, we're going to take a look at what we have. Okay. We managed to chat to Madosini while she was in Cape Town for a concert at the Heading Hall, where she performed through an interdisciplinary art project called Any Given Sunday. Take a look at it. Dingulatoz kamalam lo lo bis. Dingumatosin gestuko. 
Dazalewa emta tagulali ya watlom. Who had no hope and the sense? Is the lot of the stank? Zibiza, Oba, Zizikobo, Zizikosa, Luat, no hope and the lot of Kugu Tema Pandani, 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 Um hope, who found this was a zinny in Tom. Um hope. In Tom Besson, a pamby who was a fundi sewer, no game. Who was? Who had that fund to swang mamma? Umanzusa, no chagas. And the fund is the same in dinner, fourteen upper, five fifteen. Ubandani Pazu and Pelos Okul and Lomle and Quale. The Tandu Lilangan born in Tangazam's Balek. At the end, a tool and the fund see a tail bang alas you. One the fund is sack. Who had it? Lens where? Go, 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 cool. No look, no look at Lens, Lindsay. No look, Ile Lindsay. Ulico, the Coquac, Ulucum. Lina Macolo, Wallo. Uli, Uli, cause the Bench of Elvins. Ulico. Ufage, everything. The Aitangi wire. Learning to. They are what cause a bimmy leper pant. Le. Ellis Lent only. Nitini na ikala pasi apa ikun. Tinage guwasa skose ndala. Wagu sengwa inko mwagutu wa masa. Sivubi ise sike. Niselwa guwasa skose. Umkupe unawo. Nandika ukuni lao. Lulugi le lenze nzi. Koba ngu kwa amu. Tifage le waya ndi haitenga na le waya. Zenga le. Tiliko obeliti libe nzi. Zeng ban sen si logen diti ufundi swa zinto mbesi ngapa mbili kuwe na awe ya ufundi sabako nzalonza ya into ya kuakosa le ikali swa zinto mbesi ngakazwa ndong mama zeng buati lona kazwa ndong mama umkupo kazwa ndong mika ngoku besi kali swa le mi kupo si kali swa tolo tolo si kali swa amakilongo na ngoni kilongo zangu ndili fundi mnda fundi zito. Ngoku saz kela kuba sisi ntebe sibuta ngazo kuba kutala. Kungeko TV, kungeko FM, kungeko zonge ndu zibonai. Nda ikona ikila mafoni ya iti ito, isi tiwa. One of the sounds that I collect is world music, and Matt Dawson's sound inspires me and heals me all the time. I don't believe that I came to watch her life. It's one of the very healing experiences, even for the planet and the energy and the people that came to support Matt Dawson. She's a national treasure. Her music speaks to everyone. I didn't understand a word she said, but I understood her music, the fun, the, the she's so naughty, and she's so joyous. And it just, it just resonates with you and goes deep into you. Yeah, she's amazing. This is the fourth time watching her, and every time it's a new experience. And I think as, as one of the very few who really pushes closer music, I'd like to see most, more bow instruments be brought into the industry of music. Funugus <laughs> Kulentis, <laughs> 
Ah ah, anga tseli into oku kudinta kaku. Maga funde le nti be ya ke. No ba sendi fila zuzu tuam. Iza ba ya ke. Na ya funde sabani. I'm, I'm really very happy with the music, Madosini's music. This is music from the Eastern Cape. It's the music that I was brought up on myself, and, and so I can relate to it very directly. The South African College of Music, which is in our faculty, has as one of its streams African music, and this music is taught there. Students learn these instruments there. It, every year it gets played at the Vice Chancellor's concert at the Baxter. It's heartening to know that we have this section of African music that takes this music and sustains it for future generations. Wow, I absolutely love Uma Matosini. I adore her music. But what message do you have to um, artists out there, traditional artists out there, after hearing what Uma Matosini said about her fear of this music dying and also the dean? Uh, I should think that the musicians around the townships who are very much interested of this music, it's about time to consult people like myself because I'm one of the founders of this music that you hear here in South Africa, you know, because I started this about 40 years ago. So if they could come talk to us because we'll never, you'll never know what people want up until they come to you saying mm. that I want to do this, I want to do this mm. and that and that because in my orchestra we play almost all different types of music. You know, there are some who specialize also in the Western classical music and so on. So there's all variety of music. We don't say this is classical, this is jazz, but we are mainly teaching the traditional African music. Wow. But now I've started this school because of that problem because I will never let my music die and African music die because this is the music of our forefathers. If I let it die, then that is why I'm saying that as long as I live, I will never let that music wow. die. So that is why I started a very mini school where we teach the kids from at the age of four up until 12, you know? They learn about all the traditions, especially I always start at home before I go to other countries, yes. you know? Wow. And uh, it's going very well. very well. And now even the venue where we are using is very small because a lot of people now, they start enrolling with their children because that this is what is needed. Wow, you that's know? really amazing. Yes. Yeah. And thank you so much for joining thank us you. again. Thank you, Pony. Thank you, Pony. <laughs> well, don't touch that remote because when we return, the Ibuyambu Orchestra performs for us. We'll be right back. Afternoon Express wants you to join the conversation. Like us on Facebook and comment on our daily questions. Send us your tweets at Afternoon Chat using our official hashtag Afternoon Express and follow us on Instagram for exclusive pictures. Or let your voice be heard by calling us live on 083-913-3728. For more info on our daily topics, visit afternoonexpress.co.za and check out our social media platforms where we keep you informed on what's trending in our loft this week. We love to hear from you on Afternoon Express weekday at 5 p.m. on SABC3. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, we've learned so much about indigenous music today and especially traditional instruments. Now, here to perform exclusively in our loft are members of UCT's Ibuyambo Orchestra with a song called Ola Langa. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
up here on SABC3. Make sure you catch Weekend Edition tomorrow and, of course, on Sunday morning. They've got performances coming up tomorrow from Heinz Winkler as well as hip-hop artist MT. Then on Sunday, they're spending the morning with multi-award winning Afro soul singer Zahara. That and much more coming up on Weekend Edition Saturday and Sunday mornings from 6.30 to 9 a.m. Afternoon Express and Sasco are giving you the chance to win a Sasco product hamper and toaster valued at 2,000 Rand. Simply cook a dish using any Sasco product, take a picture of your dish with the Sasco product used and post it onto the Afternoon Express Facebook page along with the name of your creation and you could be a winner. T's and C's apply. We'll be right back. I truly believe there is nothing greater than love. You just gotta, you know, jump right in, take a chance, listen to your heart. You just gotta be fearless. Welcome back. You're still watching Afternoon Express right here on SABC3. In case you're wondering what's going on, well, Today, we're looking at a classical material that has been trending for, well, thousands of years, and that's literally. And today, the possibilities of marble are more exciting than ever, especially seeing that it's so easy to get hold of through Woolworths. We asked Belle Bellingham, homeware expert, to style up a table setting using marble and to take us through this new trend. Belle, lovely to see you. Welcome back to The Loft. Thank you. Now, first question, why is everybody crazy about marble? What's about this new trend? Well, like you say, it's, it's new, it's on our radar now, but it's been trending for millennia. Yeah. It's, it's an ancient material, it's steeped in all sorts of cultural references, um, just owing to its longevity. You think about statues, I mean, all the, the old buildings, it's got a long history. Absolutely. So, yes, it's trending right now, but it's, it's not a new thing. But let's talk about what makes it such a superior, you know, property. Tell me about the properties and why everybody's dying to get their hands on some marble. Well, okay, I'm biased, but firstly, <laughs> if you look at these, just these varied patterns, yes. the, the, they're vivid. I mean, the fact that you're never going to see the same grain twice, mm -hmm. its durability, obviously, um, its ability to transmit and reflect light. Oh. I mean, it's actually a, an incredibly porous material, which, yeah. you, which not everyone knows. And apart from all of that, just this, this its ability to instantly add glamour. Absolutely. Like that kind of, it's the, it is, it's, it's this this touchstone for style, really. But, you know, it's not a very cheap no. material. So how do we incorporate it, you know, in a more affordable way? Yeah. No, it's not, but you can be very clever about it. And yeah. I think you mentioned, I mean, the fact that this is all, I did all my shopping at Woolworths, they're being very clever. You can introduce yeah. it in small little um, accessories, novelties, clocks. Um, so you can be clever about it and you still get that memorial feel. Yeah. Um, you can also, I mean, this is a wallpaper. You can almost look at faux marble treatments. It's, it's the grain and that color that's so interesting. Yeah, so let's go through, Belle, what you have here. This table setting is absolutely incredible. Incredible. Uh, tell us what you have. So you? I've chosen just a few varied, very quite simple, but mm -hmm. all with a different, um, all with a different shade. It's obviously a natural material, so you're always going to get that variation. Um, I'm just absolutely for scrick for them. This kind of very um, 
dark. Yeah, <laughs> very gentle theme, but then you mix in a bit of other colors. Okay. I think that's one of the greatest properties as well. It's so good at mixing with other materials. Mm. And if you think about how we're doing everything now, artisanal, we're trying to mix all kind of warm, earthy materials. So yeah. it mixes really well. I'm playing around with your stuff. This is yeah. beautiful. Isn't it exquisite? Wow. So the thing, all of these kind of um, accessories, you could live, I mean, I have this I have this one in my bedroom, so yeah. I'm sure it's for your kitchen, but it, just with it, styled with a few perfume bottles. Oh, but clever. obviously here, it mixes perfectly with the, the kind of um, dove gray crockery, a white crockery, mm -hmm. this kind of pewtery color. It's beautiful. And then again with the glass. Now let's talk about, you know, other, the other kitchen trends that are happening yes. right now and how marble sort of uh, finds its way inside of there somehow. Well, in kitchens, people are getting a little bit less precious, I think. Oh. We're not, it's not as polished and pristine. People are having a little bit of fun, mixing more materials. Yeah. It's definitely getting a bit more artisanal in the kitchen, and marble just taps into that completely. It's that kind of natural feeling. Fantastic, but it is quite heavy. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is, but I mean, but again, then the, these are going to last. This is yeah. an investment. You very, mentioned very pricey, but this is going to last. Very, very true. Well, thank you so much for coming through. This looks absolutely exquisite. Do you have a favourite piece here? I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> I th well, I think just that, beautiful. Just that. Just beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Well, Belle, thank you very, very much. So that's the marble trend in a nutshell. Remember that everything on today's table is available at Woolworth so you can recreate this look at home for yourself. Now, that is the table setting. All that is needed is the food. If you're entertaining this weekend and your friends and family are a bit more of the messy finger food type, well, our resident chef Clem Pedro recently put on a Hellman's Burger Masterclass for some lucky viewers in Cape Town who won the competition on our Facebook page. So take a look at this. Now, Dad, you know Hellman's had a challenge for all our Cape Town viewers to come up with a signature dish featuring Hellman's, of course. Uh -huh. And those winning dishes and their owners are right here tonight for the yes. ultimate burger making masterclass. And it is so fitting that tonight we're at the oldest cooking school in the country. We're at Silwood Kitchen, so let's get our burger rocking on. We're making the ultimate hamburger tonight and we're using Hellman's, of course. So you'll see when you get your section just now, you're gonna see they'll have some Hellman's, not in the mayonnaise, but the ketchup at your section as well. Ooh. But I'm gonna give you a bit of the, the how-tos. I'm gonna teach you just the basics, but when we get that side, just let the creative juices flow. So the first thing starting with the burger, what's the one thing that you need? Bun. Mince. Oh, a mince. mince. So, uh, a patty. Mince. All right, cool. So it's 70% lean beef and then 30% fat. And the reason we do that is because there's flavor in the fat, obviously, yes. and the fat actually contributes to the cooking. How you get that amazing crust on there, you want that fat to be in there. So, so keep it nice and loose, shape it nicely, just like that. Good nice little bit of squeeze, and that's all you want. So <laughs> Dad, I'm gonna pass this to you. Great. Get your oil nice and hot. You wanna get the oil? Ah, nice <laughs> Okay, let's listen to that sizzle. There we go, that's your one here. So now the rule is, once it hits the pan, leave it, forget about it, okay? If it's gray, it's nay. Okay. If it's white, it ain't right. Yeah. If it's black, it's whack, but when it's brown, chow down. Okay, okay all, right. all right. Okay, that's the rule when it comes to meat. Dan, are you watching your... your... Oh, I'm watching, I was told okay. to leave it, I'm so leaving that's it. Fine, that's fine, you can leave that just like that. So what happens is, if you've got quite a thick patty, what happens often is you cook the outside and the inside still raw. Now for me, that's not a problem. Yeah. But for you, you might want to cook it all through. Pop the lid on, so that oh, way it keeps... steams as it sears at the same time. So okay. it cooks faster that way. So next thing I want to do, talk about the onion rings. I've soaked my onion rings in some milk, and it acts like a kind of a glue when you stick it into your flour. And the flour's already been seasoned for you. Cool, I think my patty is done. Well, before you do that, pop the cheese on. Oh, on the patty? On the patty. Okay. You're just smoking up the room. Woo. Cheese goes on the patty. Yeah. So what's happening is the lid goes on now, and that's going to help the cheese melt perfectly over the patty. Next right. step, onion rings, Dan, how's your oil? So I'm gonna dip these in there. Oh, wow, yum. You can hear that. Yeah. Cool. That's gonna go in, that's not gonna take long, it's gonna take about a minute, not even. So okay, keep an eye on it. That's gonna keep on going. Sure. Now, the buns. Now, often we like butter our bread, and then we add it to pan to toast. What about using, actually using the Hellman's for this? It creates like an amazing caramelization. Oh, really? Also, that's why some people marinate their meat in almonds. Oh, my word. Before it goes into the braai. Because it gives it a slight caramelized Texture, flavor, exactly. sweet. Exactly, and it's got, it's got that, that sweetness, and it's got the seasoning in it, and it's got the fat in there. So it absolutely helps like your chops and your meat caramelize yeah. perfectly. How's your burger doing? Can you guys see that? How the cheese is just melted right over? Oh. <laughs> the bun goes down. 
Nothing in the pan. Because yeah. the, the mayo itself has got a little bit of oil in it, so it's, a, it's an oily substance. Can you oh. see that? Can you see that? It's got that nice crispiness on there. Let's see this guy at the bottom. Oh, he yes. also okay, cool. caramelized nicely. He's wow. got a nice color on there. So you also see, like I mentioned, we've got oh, the almond delicious. and ketchup. There we go. How's that? That's enough. So the tomatoes go on first. So extra almonds, that's going to cool down the lettuce as well. I mean, create a little bit of a barrier. So lettuce doesn't get totally destroyed when you drop the, the patty on there. Great. Can you pass me your patty? I'm oh, it looks delicious. You ready for me? Go. The one important moment. Ooh, oh, yeah. yum. So I've got a little bit of barbecue sauce over here. You just a little brush over there. Almost this there. We're almost done. Wow. Onion rings. Wow, wow, Go on wow. top. Oh, you're going to put that in your you mouth. You know what? It's, it's all about height. Absolutely. All right. So this is my classic cheeseburger. Wow. All right, so it's like back to basics. So what I want you guys to do now is take what I've taught you right now, go to the other side, and then I'll set up a section for you. So we've showed you what to do. So get cooking in three, two, one. Go! Those who know me will know that my middle name is Antonio and I found another Anthony. Uh, and you've kind of gone against the grain here with two patties. It's going to be a double burger. Okay. Oh. Um, One thing I have figured out is that you're not making onion rings, you're making onion slices. That's for a change. Of course, <laughs> everybody else is making onion rings. Yes, I like the way you think, Anthony. What is going to make your sogo make? I'm not going to tell you the secret. Ooh. Gherkins, and I'm gonna make gherkin poppers, like uh -huh. chili poppers, but just with gherkins in them and with some cheese. Wow. Yeah, you'll see I have a competitive advantage because I took an extra slice of <laughs> This burger is called the pickle sprinkle because I took the pickles and I cut them and I sprinkled them on top of the burger. I've called it the double dagger deluxe because it's gonna make you full, it's going to keep you full until tomorrow. <laughs> Today was so much fun. Thank you guys for having me. I think my best experience for the day was um, the demonstration with Chef Clem. It was so amazing. It was exciting, interesting, and very delicious, I would say. <laughs> the one thing I learned today is how to make very delicious onion rings. Love it. Queen of burgers. My name means queen, so queen of burgers. Why not? Doesn't it look like a queen's burger? My burger is called Susie's Surprise because I am surprised. I didn't thought, you know, think I could make a burger. <laughs> All the halmons and crumb covered faces. It was a successful day. Oh, totally successful. My belly is nice and full. And all I'm going to say is may yo, yo, yo. It was delicious. So I definitely learned a lot. They learned a lot. Plan successful. But I say we sneak out now before they realize someone has to do the dishes. Ah, oh, you're not just a pretty face. That looks amazing. So now you know how to make the perfect cheeseburger. But after the break, it's more cheese in the kitchen with a nut-crusted mascarpone with three cheese pastry straws. Don't move. Salati Plantation Select adds subtle sweetness to toffees, caramel, bran muffins or sprinkled into a spicy curry. Salati. Always good, always sweet. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're about to start with our second dish. Now, Clem, have you ever given a cat catnip before? No. Okay, so basically if you give a cat catnip, their reaction to it is to just go crazy. Their eyes get bigger and they just get so excited. That's kind of my reaction when you give me Woolies prawn chips. I know, they're <laughs> so crazy. They're so good. So I don't know how we're incorporating that into this dish. Well, that's going to kind of be the side. It's going to be a little bucket, a mini little bucket, to scoop Ooh. up all the like creamy goodness. Okay, come, let's do it. Awesome, cool. So I'm going to start off, I got you your bowl again, and I'm going to hand you nice your spatula. spatula. There you okay. go. So we're going to start off again with a little bit of parsley. What we're going to do yeah. with this one is, again, we're going to start off with a plain flavoured cream cheese. And I'm using sure. mascarpone right now. Yeah. I'm going to pass that to you. Let's you got that? Um, also job. And then I'm going, to make, I'm going to make a little bit of a nut sprinkle. What's the difference between a mascarpone and a cream cheese? Or is that a simple It's question? just the, the process of how the cheese actually cultures, in a sense. Okay. And you could, you'll taste that this mascarpone has a slightly, well, not as sour taste as the cream cheese. Okay. It's a little more subtle. This is easier to mix. So easy. So actually, before I do that nut sprinkle, let me oh. start off with your uh, grilled artichokes. I mean, Ooh. they are so crazy. Delicious. I'm going to chop these up. These over a salad are everything. 
and on a pizza. Oh, it's just God. like, and on their own I'm as well. It's so pizza. crazy. Come on, Clem. <laughs> 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 so keep it, keep it again. I'm keeping everything nice and coarse. Exactly. I know you wanted like a little chopped, a little finer, but I'm gonna yeah. keep it nice and chunky. Doesn't matter. And that can go in. Hoi. Hoi. There you go. There we go. So I'm gonna create a bit of a, a sprinkle now that we're gonna actually coat this in. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> You're excited. Work with me. <laughs> let's do it. So let's start off with the the nuts. If you can pass that to me. Okay. I'm nuts about a sprinkle. Nuts. In. A yeah. little smoked chili flakes. Yes, definitely. And it's one of my favorite products with the Willy Shelf, the smoked chili flakes. Oh. I mean, if you want to step up from just being spicy, get a little, like, a little smoky. I oh, mean, I yeah. love being spicy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'm going to do my, I mean, the crispy onion. Oh, no, you're obsessed with that. You are. Oh, no. No, oh. Thank it's you. It's so good. Oh, yeah, we're going to have to put some in there as well. <laughs> Not many, lots. That's cool. That's fine. Okay. That's perfect. So what I'm gonna do. I was gonna actually roll you got it. Dangerous in the kitchen. Be like more, more, more. <laughs> what you can do from here is you can actually roll this on some cling wrap in like a sausage-like shape and sprinkle the nuts over. But actually, because you're working with it right now, it needs time to set. So I've got a little black plate over there for you, and okay. all I need you to do is to just spread it like nice and rustic, like like we did it just now. Cool. On this, that must go on this. On there. Okay, so let you've me got just to be very up. clear with me in the kitchen, Clem. There's no room for error. <laughs> There's no room for error. <laughs> and the reason we're making this little nut sprinkle is just to add a little bit of texture to it. Okay. Which is quite different from like having a normal one-dimensional dip. One-dimensional sure. dip sounds so like... It's like a band. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I would take a dip in one direction. <laughs> 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 Whew, okay. That looks amazing. That looks so good. Thank you. So what I want to do is I actually want to garnish again with some of the ingredients that we used inside there. Okay. So again, the rest of your artichokes. And these are so delicious. Yes. Oh my goodness. This is actually like, this is a starter on its own. No, they're amazing. There we go. And a little more crunch. Let me just move it over here, please. A starter? This is all my guests are getting when they come to me for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and then a the little bit of crunch. We're finishing yeah. off with our nut sprinkle. Do you want to sprinkle? Yeah, of course. Ooh. What a great blend. Okay, I'm gonna try and get the pieces with lots of chili. That looks crazy good. Yeah, this looks ridiculous. That looks so good. Yummy. So I'm serving it with, like I said, the prawn chips, and I kept another packet on the side, that's for you. Yeah, I thank know. you. <laughs> I don't wanna tell them how much we started with, it's gone. <laughs> and then also the cheese straws, which is pretty great. I mean, we're gonna just bring on more of that cheesy flavor. Okay. So I like just serving it straight onto the plate as well. You can actually put the plate over here for me. Yeah. And I'm making you work today. No, I, I enjoy it. It's why I have come here every day, remember? <laughs> yeah. So there we go. So just some extra tree straws on there. And those are also exactly the same way you'll use the prawn chips, just like to get it all on there. And the prawn chips, like I said, they are our tiny little buckets. Just to scoop up all that goodness. Hey. I'm salivating already, and I'm pretty sure that you are too. So remember, if you want to make this dish, all you need to do is SMS the word STRAW to 33650. SMSs cost one round 50 each, and free SMSs do not apply, and you'll get all of the information on this. Let's have a quick recap. Well, these hors d'oeuvres are quite fancy, huh? I know, but we didn't pick our audience when we knew we were going to be serving Cosamen. <laughs> we maybe should have put some meat into the mix. You can stay over. We can, we can work something Isn't out. Isn't there like biltong flavour in what there is? Yeah, yeah. Right over there. Well, exactly. that should do. <laughs> We thought you guys needed some canapes in your life. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> what is this made of? It's a cheese stick. Yeah. Cheese Just straw. Cheese. Made, not, not one, three cheese straws. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And then it's the, the prawn chips replaced right by Jeannie over there. Yeah. And in front of you, so we've got the, the mascarpone <laughs> dip. Why don't you taste? Okay. And let me know how you rank my cooking skills. <laughs> so where can audiences find your next performance? Hmm. 
<laughs> you see, you like my cheese straws. Thank cheese goodness I've slaved noise. in the kitchen mm. for hours just mm. for that reaction. I can't even answer the question with that. <laughs> yes, success. Beautiful. <laughs> Money Thank you. They didn't touch the dip. <laughs> <laughs> yes, d dip. Mm. Double dip if you want. Well, thank you so, so much please. for joining us. Um, I'm glad that Jeannie's cheese straws have just knocked you off your feet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you I've so just much for coming visible. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's all about the fromage. <laughs> and thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back again next week, Monday, on Afternoon Express. Until then, good afternoon and happy eating. Happy eating. Mwah, mwah. Bye. <laughs> next week on Afternoon Express, we tackle the struggle of post traumatic stress and we take a look at how to build your own personal brand. Another feel-good production.